All right, welcome back to the Toyota Sunday Night Sports Feed. We're sitting down now with Mitch Holtis, the voice of the Kansas City Chiefs. Going to ask you a few questions about the upcoming Chiefs season. Mitch, thank you for being here. First off, uh, the last time we saw the Chiefs on the field was in that Super Bowl, and obviously it did not go the way they wanted it to go. It didn't go the way we wanted it to go. Is that something that you can sense motivated them this offseason? A little bit, but honestly, this is a group that's motivated all the time. When you look at the leadership core of this team, starting with Coach Reed, go right down the line. Mahomes, Kelsey, Tyron Matthew, that's the way they're wired. Even if they would have won that game, they're going to be wired to go get Super Bowl 56. This is a group, though, that after they kind of got over that game, started to uh, reconfigure, reboot, and redesigned a lot of things. I'm excited. There's going to be some new stuff with this team. Uh, in that Super Bowl, you know, obviously one of the things that stood out was the offensive line. Uh, first off, how impressed are you with the organization's ability to kind of, to kind of blow it up, um, you know, fix that in one offseason, and what do you see from that group? Yeah, that's an awesome question, and I love what I saw this summer and also what I saw during training camp. I said it's something old, something new, something borrowed, something red. <laughs> okay, to use the old phrase, but you make the trade for Orlando Brown Jr., you go pay Joe Tooney, expensive but a good player, and then you get rookie, rookie, opt-out guy. But the two rookies, they hit. And we get a lot of OU fans that watch this. Creed Humphrey's been outstanding. Trey Smith could be an offensive rookie of the year candidate at right guard. He's been fantastic. What it does with those young offensive linemen who can move now is bring back Coach Reed's 2013, 14, 15 playbook of the screen game. And it's some countermeasures to what people do to try to slow down Mahomes. And so back when they had Rodney Hudson at center, now with Creed and Trey Smith, you're going to see a lot of different stuff offensively. So we, we've been around to high schools and colleges, and obviously everybody's excited to have fans back in the stadium. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously Arrowhead Stadium, everybody knows what Arrowhead Stadium is, so the players I'm sure are excited. But, you know, you personally doing what you do, how excited are you to be back in that atmosphere and to have that atmosphere back to, uh, to be there on Sundays? Well, first of all, it's going to be awesome to have that, those fans back. We got a taste of it in the preseason game against Minnesota, but that Cleveland name is going to be insane. I mean, that's arguably the biggest game of the NFL that weekend. Cleveland's coming in wanting to avenge the divisional playoff loss, and our guys are going to be just ready to go with 75,000-plus in there. Now, it'll be awesome to go, hopefully, on the road. I'm Tier 2, so that I've been able to travel with the team through the preseason. Hopefully that continues, so I'm not doing the game like this in front of a monitor, which I had to do all last year. But there is a, there's a high level of excitement around this team. It's been a terrific training camp and a really good offseason. I want to ask you about Patrick Mahomes. We know what he is. We know he's the best in the league, um, you know, in, in, almost inarguably, right? Um, but I watch him and I think, what can he do? What can he do better? What more can ex we expect from him? Uh, what have you seen from him and what do you expect from him this season? Well, I think one is time and score situation, understanding now that teams have taken your best stuff away. What do you do? He learned that last year some, but he needs some help. And that's where the offensive line comes into play. The other big part of this was getting four tight ends on the roster. But all four of those tight ends can run every route on the route tree. So Kelsey needs some help. He's played 3,400 snaps the last three years. Crazy. Nobody in the league's played more than that. Uh, but with four tight ends, now I t those safeties that you're playing back to prevent the Wasp have better come up or you're just going to run Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Darrell Williams, or run all these screens at you. It'll drive you nuts. And Tyree Kill's still on the field in that situation and he can uh, get single covered that way. So that's what I'm saying. You're gonna bring in something old from coaches 2013, 14, 15, 16 playbook where he's throwing Alex Smith's on those screens to Jamal Charles and he's running for 80 yards. And then with these four tight ends, it'd be a little bit revolutionary to what the Chiefs could do in the NFL. I look for them to go, who, how are they doing this? I swear, you know, I've never seen a fan base on social media be more excited about a fourth tight end on a roster than I've seen uh, about Jody Fortson, man. Where does that come from and what have you seen from him? That's the depth of knowledge of the Chiefs Kingdom fan base because they know that that is a countermeasure to what teams have been trying to do to put kryptonite into Patrick Mahomes' hip pocket. I've been asked a lot, what does Mahomes do now? I mean, he's 38 and 8 after 46 games. He has every major statistical category of any quarterback in NFL history. He's number one in those categories after 46 games. So now, what about the 47th game? Well, it's not necessarily getting glitzy stats. It's about being even more effective with what teams are trying to do to throw you off. The four tight ends, they can play three of those four. They can play two of those four. And you have skilled players. Blake Bell, uh, fans remember him from his OU days, Bell Dozer and Bishop Carroll in Wichita. 
uh, the Noah Gray kid's really skilled at a Duke, and then Jody Fortson, who's been the fan favorite. But when you have guys that have that skill, you do two things. One, you take heat off Kelsey. Kelsey needs somebody to take the heat off him. And two, you give Mahomes a countermeasure. I'm fired up as, as much as the fans about it. I want to ask you about the running, running back situation. Obviously, Clyde edwards Larry year one to year two. Uh, where do you think we'll see the biggest jump in his game? I think in the screen game. So if you've got your turn, it's kind of a fantasy football question, I think. <laughs> I can kind of see through those. Uh, maybe you've already had your fantasy draft or maybe no, you've not, got your. Not yet. Okay, no. here comes your four state <laughs> fantasy draft, right? Uh, I would tell you if you have an all purpose league, so he not necessarily would rush for 1,200 yards, but he may be that guy that's in that range of 800, 800, because the screen game, which I've mentioned, go back to the Minnesota game. They ran it to. Uh, Gore to Derek Gore, but they got a 56 yard touchdown off a screen. Now that's just me throwing it to the camera <laughs> and you running for 50 yards. The fact that Creed Humphrey's here, Joe Tooney's here, Trey Smith is here, Lucas Niang is here, and Orlando Brown Jr. is here allows you to run those screens. Well, Clyde's going to be the beneficiary of most of that. And plus draws, and uh, if they go to uh, double tight end or triple tight end packages, that's going to help Clyde. Uh, as both a passing target and as a running target. So if your league's got all-purpose yards, <laughs> take Clyde.